Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. For the past few months, I've recorded some crazy videos where new fields of UX design have emerged. Things like AX, VX and more. Now this video is about how one of our most beloved tasks that we do, which is prototyping, is being replaced by something called vibe coding and how it is shaping a new future for UX UI designers, how it is building more value for for people like us in companies, organizations, products and more. In today's video, I'll take you through everything that I have learned over the past few months on what is happening in the industry and how prototyping in tools like Figma are going to be replaced by something called vibe coding. Let's check this out. Before we begin, make sure you hit the thumbs up if you like the video and subscribe and hit the bell icon. In case you don't want to miss out on design updates like this, the bell icon should be switched on to all and that way you'll you'll get all my videos on time. All right, so the first pointer is how Figma prototyping is being replaced by vibe coding. When we look at Figma prototypes, we look at animating between two or more screens. When you click on a button, something happens. When you drag something, there is a change in the... Or if you want to replicate something that would happen in real life with, a, with an actual user, you use these prototypes. In fact, for the longest time, these prototypes have been used to test kind of real products with users, making them feel like they're actually interacting with the actual application. Prototypes save a lot of time for companies and a lot of money because we can quickly create a MVP of sorts and that will help us test things out before the developer actually starts coding it. Most companies do this till now. However, vibe coding has brought in a new flow of things, a new flow of a new workflow for us designers. After the final UI is done or the wireframes have come out, we move on to something called building an MVP, an actual coded out MVP which can work with Android, iOS, web, whatever platform we're building for. Tools like Lovable and tools like Bolt, even a new tool by Google called Firebase Studio has brought in a huge revolution in this market. Designers like you and I can quickly go into Lovable, type in the kind of app we want, or even upload our Figma screens, keeping in mind our already existing prototype, and it will create functional apps with this. This means that users can actually download this now onto their phone, install the app and start using it like a normal application. In fact, tools like Bolt and Firebase Studio allow you to set up a backend as well. So if a user fills out a form or a user submits something in the application, you can actually detect that in real time with the backend support. In fact, these tools allow you to continuously add new functionality. So if you've built a new function in your app, as a designer, you can quickly just add that to the application. Just define that function and you will have the code ready for it. What's cool about this is that designers like us who don't, who don't know how to code or who don't want to code will not have to do it in this case because it's absolutely a no code process. Now what's, now what's surprising about this is that real apps often feel and function more like real apps while prototypes can often have a lot of issues while the user is testing it. And we and designers have, have to often look over the shoulder of these users while they're interacting with the designs because the prototype often is not fully functional, it's half big. These prototypes, these MVPs that we can build now will also bring in a added advantage to the designers as value to the company. As designers, we'll be able to build something quickly for startups and founders to show to their investors, also for people in the company to try out on their mobile devices or on web. We can release something before a developer even gets their hands onto this. In fact, developers will have a lot of help with these MVPs because the code will already be written for them. Now they just have to replicate the code, fix the bugs, and even if they're starting from scratch, this code will be of huge help. It'll be like a reference code or a reference app on which they will build stuff out on. This means a lot of time saved for developers, a lot of money saved for the company. Now we'll be able to show that we are able to build more than just a mock prototype. Here we have the chance to add value and for companies to see us as more than just a pixel tweaker or a rectangle creator. However, there are challenges. Anything good often comes up with some challenges. In this case, the biggest challenge 
is first of all lack of knowledge of these tools if you have a lack of knowledge of how to prompt correctly which is prompt engineering and if you have a lot lack of knowledge of how to debug existing application or an existing prototype you will stumble onto a lot of challenges again not saving time you'll have to learn things by your own and and oftentimes you're going to waste more time than you would with just a simple prototype so unless you have good knowledge about this going into vibe coding straight up without practice or without the knowledge of how to actually talk to an AI agent, you will feel lost. Apart from this, some developers have pointed out that vibe coded applications are not valuable. In fact, there's an entire LinkedIn post on this. I'll share it on screen. Developer talking about how these vibe coded applications often have replicated or redundant code, code that the developer will either get confused by or there will be issues with. Second is, of course, unnecessary logic. Sometimes vibe coded applications are overthought by these AI agents. There's a lot of logic that is almost unnecessary or shouldn't be used in an application of that type. How designers don't know that code that is going behind and often can create some miscommunication with developers. And if a developer is trying to learn this alongside design, then the developer might have less or no understanding of the code himself even though they have professional knowledge. In fact, a lot of developers are talking about how developers are now dependent, junior developers especially, are dependent on things like GitHub Copilot to write their code for them or to fix bugs. And this could bring, bring a huge gap in developer development space and even the designer space if companies don't want this as a part of their workflow, designers cannot then add this as a value to their value tree or as an ability in their CV because it won't be of value to the further companies. So right now, we designers are juggling with whether vibe coding can be a good step for designers to bring a cool MVP into the workspace because at the end of the day, we even have to work with founders, co-founders. So even if one of those parties are not on board with this vibe coding phenomenon or don't appreciate us using these vibe coding platforms. Now, a huge benefit of vibe coding for designers, which I wanted to state before we move on to the next segment of this video, is how designers are now capable of creating their own design-fueled applications and design fuel, or being able to design our own design tool. I mean, that would be crazy because we don't know, we don't know code, but we can still develop something like this. So if you want to solve your own problems, go ahead, try it out in private. Things like Lovable and Firebase Studio will get you set up. And if you want to take it to the next level, there is something called Cursor, which can write Android apps, web apps, native apps, iOS apps, whatever you like, you can build with Cursor. In fact, you can even build, say, a tool for your camera, what I'm shooting on. You can build a software for this camera with vibe coding with Cursor and tools similar to Cursor. So pick the right tools and you'll have a good time. Now, let's get on to the slightly more valuable aspect of this video, where I will share my favorite vibe coding platforms and tools and what is best for different tasks. So let's begin with my first one, which is Cursor. Cursor is where freedom is of the utmost importance. You, you can technically now pick up a tool like Cursor, ask it to create an Android application and give you the APK. Import the APK based on whatever application you've created, import it onto your phone, click the file manager and you will instantly have an app installed on your phone with developed by Cursor. So if I want to design a sleep tracker, which I currently am, I can quickly convert that sleep tracker into a fully fledged app with Cursor on my Android phone. If you wanted to go one step above and also attach things like Google Gemini or be able to connect it with like a backend, you can do that as well with, with Firebase Studio, which is our next tool. Firebase Studio probably has it covered on their platform. What's best about this, it can include Google Gemini capabilities in your existing application, connect it with a backend which is supported by Firebase. You can check out how it works. You can always learn about that later. But of, of course, be able to connect it with third party apps or third party APIs, for example, getting say weather information on your app 
or anything like that. Firebase Studio is like all the tools combined into one, whether it's developing an Android app, iOS app, web app, whatever you want, you can do it with this, with support for different kinds of syntaxes and programming languages for different devices. Now, where do tools like Lovable and Bolt fit into this phenomenon? If you want to create a web app, a app hosted on a website, like, like a normal website does, but with things like membership, sign in, login, be able to do everything. Even the app you install of Figma on your device is actually a web browser technically, which is just browsing through Figma's day-to-day -day interfaces with just a few capabilities of its own. So if you're trying to develop something on the web or an app that you can share through the web like a website does, you can do that with something like Lovable and Bolt. That is what they are now known for. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure you hit the thumbs up, share it with your peers, share it with your design friends, your design buddies, your juniors, whoever you wanna share it with, hit the share button, share it with everyone, and I'll see you next time. Take care, God bless.